Hey guys, Lisa here. I am really excited for what I'm gonna be trying to do this week. If you like stationery, you probably have some sort of notebook that just has this gorgeous cover. And you kind of just don't want to use it because the cover is just too pretty. Well, I possibly maybe have a solution for that. I'm going to be trying to take something with a beautiful cover and to turn this into a new recycled journal with that beautiful cover and the history of what was written on the pages within the new recycled pages. If I'm successful, this could be a game changer for all of our favorite notebooks. So if you want to try this yourself as well, or if you just want to see if I succeed, please keep on watching and let's just get right into it. So the cover that I really want to reuse is the cover of my 2020 planner. I bought it with so much excitement, it is gorgeous, but then we all know what happened, so I hardly got to use it. It's basically still empty, but I can't do anything with it. So I was so sad and the cover is still in such good condition. It has beautiful end pages and even this bookmark kind of thingy. So if I could actually reuse this, that would be absolutely amazing and I would love that. For this year, I've actually switched over to a reusable notebook by Bambook, where you can just erase your plannings and it has week planners and month planners as well as to-do lists and just normal notes. And I absolutely love it and it's perfect for people who don't have too much to write in their calendars. So if you want one and you live in Germany, Belgium or the Netherlands, definitely check it out. It's a great Dutch company. So let's get on with it. So you're going to find the end pages and you are very carefully going to rip off the pages glue to it, trying to keep the end page intact as much as you can. You can already see that it's coming apart here. You want to do this on both sides. I'm actually going to take this paper net to help out a little bit so I can really take it apart and then I can just take the whole text block off. And I can put the cover to the side and keep it safe. The bookmark thingy is just glued on so I can just peel off and also put to the side for later use. We are going to use that again because it's pretty. You can see that the text block is glued. This will be the case for most notebooks. We don't want to have the glue anymore. So the technique that I'm going to use is just to rip off all the pages of the glue spine. You can do it one by one or a few at a time, whatever works for you. But you just want to rip off all the pages until you are left with just a few pages and the glue spine. And then you should be able to quite easily rip off the glue, like so. The glue will be the one thing we're not going to recycle, so you can just throw that away. You should be left with just a bunch of papers, and you'll want to be ripping those into tiny pieces. Well, you can rip, but you can also cut it with scissors, or if you have one, you can also use a shredder to turn it into even smaller pieces. Use whatever you have, you just want them to be in smaller pieces. When you have everything shred or cut or ripped, whatever, you want to put it into a container. I really like looking at all these pieces. I like that the paper isn't fully white. The new paper will also have this slight yellow color and I know that the blue writing on it will also reflect in blue speckles in a new paper and I'm just really excited to see how it turns out. You want to make your paper soft to blend, so I'm going to be adding water and making sure that all the paper is soaking. And then I just leave it overnight and come back to it the next day. So here we are back with our soaking paper ready to be blended. So I'm going to be adding a few handfuls to my blender. Topping it off with water and then bringing it over to my blender. I then blend it up until I feel like everything seems to be blended. And then I should be left with a nice soft pulp. I am <laughs> then going to strain it a little bit so I can store it easily. I put it in a separate container so I can just put it easily to the side. I then repeat this process until all the old paper is made into a pulp. You should then be left with a container full of paper pulp that you can set aside until you are ready to turn it into new paper. For your paper making process, it's important to choose the right size mold and deco for your cover. The paper should be able to fit in the cover normally or when you fold it in half. My mold and deco is on the bigger side, but it should be able to fit when I fold it in half. I might just have to cut off a little bit. I then grab a nice big handful of the pulp and add it to a large container of water. 
The container should just be big enough to hold your mold and deco. And make sure to stir the pulp in very well so it's all nice and blended with the water. I then take my mold and deco and scoop up the paper pulp to form it into a sheet. I tilt the mold to spread out all the pulp and then let the water drain out. I balance the mold and deco on my arm and then carefully lift off the deco. I then transfer the paper to a cloth sheet and press in firmly. I use a sponge to soak up all the excess water. And then carefully lift off the frame. I can then lift up the cloth and very carefully move it over to a hard surface which for me is a cutting board. I keep making paper with this technique until all the pulp is used up. I carefully stack all the sheets on top of each other on the cutting board. I add a little bit more pulp to the container every one to two sheets. If you want a more detailed explanation of this process, I have a full tutorial on paper making on my page that I will link down below. It also includes a tutorial on how to make your own mold and deco with household materials. So make sure to check it out if you're interested. I can then bring them over to my drying area. And I just hang them up on a drying rack with clothespins, nothing too special. And I let them dry like this overnight. The next day I can take them down and now they are very much dry but not yet ready to be used because they are very much not flat. This is an optional step, but I like to iron my sheet to speed up the pressing process. I just take a single sheet that's still on the cloth and then go over it with my iron. It really helps to flatten them out and I do this with every single sheet. They are then ready to be peeled off the cloth and this is a very satisfying process. There are quite some creases in my paper and this is because they were in my cloth and I hadn't gotten them out with my iron. Because this journal is just for me, I'm not going to stress too much about it. Imperfections and mistakes are going to happen and they are okay, they're part of the process, so it's fine. So I'm just going to embrace the creases in the paper and call it character. I now have a stack of paper that is almost flat, but I want them to be super flat so I am going to press them just for less long than I normally would. I add them to my trusty book press and I tighten it up very nicely so it's nice and packed in there. And then I let the paper sit in there until the next day. Now they are ready to be taken out of the book press and to be actually turned into a journal. I can already tell that not all the pages will fit in the journal because this is already not fitting and they're still going to be folded in half. So I go through them and pick out the ones I want to use. I end up picking out 21 pages out of the roughly 25 that I've made and then group them into sect of 3 so I can have 7 signatures. If it does end up not being able to fit, I can easily just take off a signature, but we'll find that out while I'm making it. I take each group of 3 and fold them in half with my bone folder. Because you have handmade paper, it's not going to be perfect and you're just going to have to eyeball it a little bit. I do this with all of them until I am left with 7 signatures. This is going to be the text block and you can already tell that it's not going to fit in the cover, so we're going to have to fix that. There's a few ways to do it, but I'm just going to mark it out and cut it off already before stitching. So I just mark off on each signature where I'm going to have to cut. I also mark off half a centimeter at the top and the bottom so the edges will be smooth and it will for sure fit in the cover. It's then time to take out my trusty paper cutter and I slice off where I marked on each signature. Whatever you cut off, you can recycle again if you want to. I always love it when I find random letters like this in the paper. It really shows that the paper is recycled and has its own stories and it makes me super happy. 
now I have a textbook that's actually gonna fit in the cover. If you want, you can just glue along the spine and make a textbook like this. But for those of you who want to actually learn how to bookbind, I will be showing you how to do the simple kettle stitch that I love to use. If you do choose to glue, or if you're not interested in seeing this tutorial, you can go to this time and it will skip you right over the explanation. But if you do want to learn how to do my version of the kettle stitch, here it is. I'm gonna start off by making a template out of simple printer paper. Just fold the paper in half and match it to the size of your signatures. I'm just gonna cut it off screen real quick and here it is, perfect size for my signature. Then you wanna fold it open because the template is actually about this crease. You wanna take a ruler so you know where to put your markings. And the way that I like to do it is just have one mark in the middle and then markings on each side around two centimeters apart. It really doesn't matter, honestly, as long as it's the same on each signature, it doesn't really matter, and that's why the template is so important. I am going to write down on this template what it is so I can use it later if I want to, and I'm also going to add this arrow here so I know what weighs up, because it is a handmade template and it's not going to be perfectly symmetrical, and I want it to be the same on each signature so I'm going to know which weighs up. I then take something I can poke in, and I take my first signature and fold it open to the middle crease. I then put my template on top, make sure it lines up, and that the arrow is pointing upwards. I then take something to poke with, I use this all that I got in a bookbinding kit from Amazon, and then quite logically, with your pokey thingy, you just poke straight through the template, through your signature. Then when you take up your template, you have the holes nicely in the crease, and also on the spine. And you want to do this with every single signature make sure it's all the same you want to make sure that you don't turn around your signatures and that you place them on top of each other the way you also poke the holes so everything will line up nicely so then just keep on poking until you've done all your signatures you should then be left with something that looks like this you then want to take your thread you can just use regular sewing threads if you want to it doesn't have to be this thick for this situation i'm going to be using a slightly thicker nylon thread in a bright yellow because i thought it would fit nicely with the accents of the cover lengthwise i like to take one and a half times the amount of signatures i have in the width of the signature if that makes sense but it doesn't really matter because if you run out there's an easy fix and i will show you that later on you then want to take your needle you can use a curved needle or a straight needle it doesn't matter and you want to put your thread through without a knot but you do want a knot at the end you want to take your first signature and flip over the rest like so so you know exactly how to line it up so you can flip over the next signature then pick whichever side you want to start on and then go inside the first hole in your first signature then pull your thread through all the way until your knot hits the end then go out again through the second hole and you want to always pull all the way through you then go in again into the next hole and then out again in the next one if your thread can tangle, be patient to untangle it. Just go slow if necessary, and then go in and out throughout the whole spine. And then when you reach the end, you are just gonna go back outside again. Just weave through the whole signature again. So in and out. It should then look something like this. You then want to tie a knot at the end. You want to go underneath the stitch and then loop through again to create a knot. You don't want a knot to stay on the inside because that's the stitching you're going to see. So you're going to take your needle and go outside again through the same hole and pull until the knot comes out as well. Because we're not going to see the spine, it really doesn't matter what it looks like. Then take your second signature, flip it over like so, and then go in, in the first hole of that signature. Pull all the way through, then go out through the second hole. And then you want to go underneath the first stitch like so, and then also underneath the second stitch so you kind of loop around that hole there and then you go back in to the same hole that you went out of 
kind of creating this sort of knot. Then you want to go outside to the next hole and do the same thing again. Loop underneath the first stitch and again underneath the second stitch, looping around that hole and going back in to create a knot. You want to do that all the way through until your second signature is probably stitched to the first one. Then when you're at the last hole, you want to add your third signature, loop around the first stitch like you did before, but then go into the third signature instead of back into the same hole. And pull all the way through. You're then going to go outside again, the second hole, and I'm going to do a similar thing, which you're going to go loop around the stitching between the first and the second stitch. If necessary, you might want to flip through pages and go from the back to find where exactly you need to put your needle. You're always looping the direction you're stitching. So first we went from right to left and now we're going from left to right. And then you want to go back in. So you're again creating a knot. Then you're going to go outside again, again looping between the first and second signature, underneath the stitching there and going back inside and then going back outside into the next hole. And you want to do this exact process again until the end when you're going to loop in the same way. But instead of going back into the same hole, you're going to go into the hole of the next signature. So you're going to do the same thing with the signature again. You're going to loop around the knot underneath this hole in the direction that you're stitching. So this time from right to left. And then go back into the same hole, creating a knot. And then you do this all the way until the end again. And then at the end, you go underneath and back into the new signature. So keep doing that with all your signatures. If you run out of thread, you just simply have to tie it off on the inside with a knot and then go outside with your needle to pull out the knot to the outside, then cut off the excess and just simply take a new thread, go back in, until the knot hits the end and then keep on stitching like nothing has happened. When you've reached the end of your last signature, you can just tie it off, cut off the excess, and then you have your finished textbook made with a kettle stitch. After a quick test, it actually seems like the text block is a little bit too thick for my cover, so I'm just gonna quickly take off the seventh signature. That's much better. I'm not gonna glue the spine with just some PVA glue. You can skip this step if you don't want to. I like to do this for extra security. I really make sure to get all those knots so nothing will come loose. I then put the text block in my small book press in between some wax paper to protect it from the glue. And I let it sit there to dry until the next day. The text block should now be dry and ready to be taken out of the book press. It actually looks really good, but I realized I had forgotten to add the bookmark. But that's okay, we can still do that, so I'm gonna add a little bit of glue at the top, add the bookmark, press it in. I'm adding a little bit of glue on top of it also, just to really secure it in. I also choose to straighten out the edge with a paper cutter and a ruler, and very slowly cut off the edges. This is a very tedious and long process, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it when you use recycled paper because it just kind of becomes messy and recycled paper doesn't tend to handle it that well. Normally, I don't tend to do this, but for this, I just wanted to show you the options. It's not my favorite. It takes a very long time and it looks kind of messy. So this is how it ended up. It's straight, but it's also quite fluffy. So I'm just gonna clean it up with some scissors. There you go, less fluffy, maybe also less straight, but I like this more. So now the text block is finally ready to be added to the cover. I'm going to glue the text block on the same end bit again, so we're going to glue along this line. So I'm going to add a line of glue and then very very carefully add the text block exactly where I want it to be. Press it on, close the journal and actually use the elastic band to kind of use it as a press. If you don't have it, you can also add a book. And leave it for a few minutes until I go to the next side. On this side, I'm actually adding the glue here. It doesn't really matter. And then carefully closing it right where I want it to be. And then also close the cover. 
add to your elastic band and leave it to dry until it's finally ready. And here it is, my recycled journal out of my 2020 planner. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. All the papers have creases and the text block actually became too short because I struggle so much with the straightening. But honestly, I love it. I love the yellow stitching with all the yellow accents. I love that we were able to keep the original end pages. That you can really see the history of the pages within all the speckles on the new pages. I'm mainly just super excited that I get to use this cover again in the form of a handmade recycled journal. I'm pretty happy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of my content, make sure to subscribe. I post every single week. And if you tried this yourself, please tag me at Lisa on TikTok and Instagram. I would love to see. And if you have any questions, comment them down below. I'll try to answer as much as I can. And for now, I hope to see you next week. Bye bye bye. I'm gonna wait for the bells to stop. I live right next to a church. <laughs>